everyone. Today we are doing a sweater, an extra small dog sweater. We are going to make it Pokemon themed. You need a size five millimeter crochet hook. You need a pair of scissors. You, I'm going to use yellow for the base of the dog sweater and then of course for the Pokeball that I'm going to put on the dog sweater, you're going to need um, red, white, and black. The red, white, and black, you just need scraps. Okay, so we're going to get started in just a minute. Hi everyone, so today we are going to be making a Pokemon dog sweater size extra small. So this would be the size of sweater you would make to fit like a Chihuahua or a Yorkie or maybe a very small Shih Tzu um, or a Min Pin or something like that. So in my house we are Pokemon fans if you can tell as you can tell by my channel we do all kinds of things Pokemon. Okay so first we're going to start this sweater by making our chain. Now when I make a chain I take my yarn I cross it over. See how I have a little cross there? I put my thumb on it to hold it. I put my hook through the loop. I grab the yarn, pull it through, and that's how I get my slip stitch, okay? If you have a different way of making a slip stitch, the main thing is that you get a slip stitch. Now we're going to chain 40, okay? So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40. Now I'm using yellow as my base because I was honestly thinking of Pikachu when I did it, but um, the main thing is you don't want to use the same colors that you would be using for your Pokeballs. Now Pokeballs come in all different colors. You can make them in all different colors. So the main colors that they have though are white and black, but you could go blue, you could go purple, you could go orange. I've seen all different kinds and different things. Okay, so now we're gonna take our chain. We're gonna go to the very first stitch and we're gonna slip stitch into that. So that means yarn over, go through both stitches, and that's a slip stitch. Make sure you don't twist your work, okay? Now we're gonna chain two, one, two, and now we're gonna do half double crochets. So what we're doing is yarn over into the chain, yarn over, you'll have three loops, one, two, three, yarn over, go through all three loops. That is a half double crochet. We're gonna do that all the way around and we should end up with 40 stitches, okay? So the first row is always the hardest to do, um, but uh, once you get this, this foundation row done, then after that it's just a breeze to, to make all these rows after this. It'll just seem like nothing. So if you're new to crocheting and this foundation row takes you a bit of time, don't fret. The more you crochet, the better you'll get at it. And you know what? I've been crocheting so since I was three. And how I started was I just sat there and my grandmother would give me a crochet hook and she'd give me a ball of yarn and she'd say, make snakes. And I would just sit there and make chains. And we would go camping and I'd sit in the truck and I'd make chains and chains and chains. And finally, 
she said to me, I said to her one day, I said, I want my snakes to have bumps. <laughs> and so that's when she started teaching me how to do the different stitches. Now, my grandmother, as I'm sure you can tell by my first name, was French. So we also had a language barrier because in my household, we only spoke English. And of course, I went to English school, so I didn't know how to speak French. So she couldn't tell me exactly what she was doing. So she would show me. And so to this day, I'm better at watching someone do something or looking at a picture than actually following a pattern because for the longest time, I didn't know what half the things I did was called. Sorry about that. I had a sudden technical difficulty. Yeah, so she would show me what to do, but I didn't know what is anything was called because she did it in French <laughs> and I didn't know what she was saying. She would just tell me to look and yeah, she spoke a little bit of English, just not very much. So we're doing 40 stitches here. We're going all the way around. And then we are going to do 12 rows of half double crochet round and round and round and round and round but we are going to connect at each row and I'm going to show you how I do that because for me when I connect at each row if I just do it into my chain three like they say that you can do and it stays all straight yeah it doesn't stay straight for me so I'm going to show you my little trick so I can keep it straight otherwise it goes crooked um, and there might be another YouTuber that does can show you how to do it to make it stay straight and always just go in the chain three, but I am not that YouTuber. So, here we go. We're almost at the end. I like this yellow. This yellow, like I said, reminds me of Pikachu. <laughs> My, uh... My, actually, my whole family, we all play Pokemon. There's myself, my husband, my sons, my mother, who's like 75. She plays Pokemon. She has a lot of fun with it. Um, actually, people tease her because we'll be going around town and she'll stop in the middle of a store and she'll be playing Pokemon Go and someone will think, you know, because she's older that something's wrong with her and they'll stop to see if she's okay. And she's like, no, I'm trying to catch a Rapidash or I'm, <laughs> I'm trying to catch a Pokemon, she says. <laughs> and they look at her and they say, no way. And she's like, yeah, I almost got him. And she's like, three, two, one. And Oh, got it. Okay. And then she keeps going on her way. It's just hilarious. There was one day she was getting her hair done. And uh, the hairdresser, she got the hairdresser to stop for a minute because there was a Pokemon she wanted. Okay. Anyway, so I'm at the end. So let's count. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39. And last one is 40. So we'll do that. 40. And then we're going to, in this one, we are going to go in the third chain. And we are going to do a slip stitch. Now we're going to chain three and we're going to go all the way around again. And we're going to end up with 40 stitches, but I'll come back and I'll show you how I connect that final stitch because I don't like it going diagonally. So I'll be back in a sec. Hi everyone. So funny thing, I broke my tripod. So now we're on a different angle and I hope you can see what I'm doing. Okay, so I have got to my last stitch right there, see? 
So what I'm going to do, this is my slip stitch that I did on the previous round. Okay, see that? Okay, I'm actually going to do a stitch in that slip stitch. Okay, a half double crochet. Then instead of attaching in my chain right there, I am going to slip stitch into that very first stitch that I did on this row. Okay, so let's do that again. So, I put a stitch in where my slip stitch from the row before was, okay? Then, instead of going into my chain two, I'm going to go into the first half double crochet that I did for this row and I'm going to slip stitch into that and then I'm going to chain two. Okay. And I'm going to do this all the way around. We're going to do 12 rows. Next row you would go into the chain and the row after that you go into the stitch. In the next row you go into chain, the chain. The next row after that you go into the stitch. And we're going to do that and we're going to do 12 rows and then we'll come back, okay? Okay everyone, I'm back. So far I've got 11 rows and I'm just going to do the 12th row. Um, I'm hoping that this is an okay angle. I tried different ones. I broke my tripod and now I'm basically having my camera just on the desk in front of me, so I hope you can see what I'm doing. Actually, who knows, this may turn out to be a better angle than with my tripod. So, we're on our 12th row, and then we are going to, so this is kind of the bottom part of the sweater. We're, we start at the bottom, we work our way up to the neck, okay? And this is an extra small dog sweater, probably fit um, small to medium sized cat. Uh, if you can get your cat into clothing, then this would look very adorable. Uh, and I am using an uh, applique pokeball, which I'm going to show you how to make. But I'm also going to put a link in the description for the lady who I got the pattern from. She has a YouTube channel as well. I believe it's Jada in Stitches. And she has a lot of neat things on her channel, and I totally recommend um, checking it out. Uh, I will put a link to her channel in the description. Now, she's using the um, Pokeball in a granny square to make a baby blanket. I am not doing that, obviously, because I'm making a dog sweater, right? Okay, so here we're on my last stitch. This is the stitch. So if I went um, chain stitch, chain stitch, chain stitch, chain stitch, chain stitch, chain, this means I would go into the stitch. So I'm going to do my last um, half double crochet in the one that the actual stitch that I would have used to join. And then I go into the first stitch ditch the first half double crochet that I did. Uh, then I'm chaining up two. Okay, see my chain up two. Now we are going to count out. If you notice along the side here, see how straight it is instead of kind of going sideways. Um, so we are going to count out 20 half double crochets. Okay, we're only going to stitch in 20 half double crochets. So, one, two, three, four, 
five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, and twenty. Okay, so we've got our bottom of our dog sweater, okay? We've got one row up. This is the back part of the sweater. So we are going to chain two, one, two, and we are going to turn our work and we are going to go back over those 20 stitches. We are not counting the chain two as a stitch. We want 20 stitches across, okay? We are going to do this for six rows. I had to think, I had to count it out. <laughs> Isn't that funny? Because I just, I've been doing this pattern for so long. And this pattern is one that I made up. That's why I'm not putting links for it anywhere. It's just one I kind of made up. I, I took a whole bunch of ideas from different patterns and squashed them all together and made my own. So that's what I do. So we're going to go back and forth. So counting that first row and this being our second, we are going to do a total of six half double crochet rows. And this will be the back of the sweater. Okay. And in case uh, you're interested, I do have other dog sweater patterns for extra small dogs as well as small. I think I have one online for a small um, tutorial. I do sell them on Etsy, which I'll put a link in the, in the description. And um, yeah, so I will put... I will put uh, links in the description for my other dog sweater, extra small dog sweaters and small dog, dog sweaters, and my playlist for pets and pet sweaters and such in the description. I'm going to pause here. You're going to do those six rows, and then we're going to come back. Okay, so I'm back. I'm just finishing up this the sixth row of half double crochets up the back on these 20 stitches, okay, 20 stitches. So now I'm coming to the end. Now, we are going to leave a tail and we are going to snip our yarn. Now, we're just gonna put our, our tail through our loop, but we are not pulling this tight. We're just pulling it so that it doesn't unravel, okay? Now, we're going back to the side that we didn't do. Okay, so see, we did this side and this side we didn't do. Now, of course I dropped my yarn. Okay, so what we are going to do is we are gonna attach our yarn. So to do this, I put my yarn through, I pull my yarn, through that stitch and then I do chain two. Okay. Now we're going to count out 20 stitches the other way. So one, two, three, four, five, six, Seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 
12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, and 20. Okay. Now, we are going to start decreasing at each end in order to shape our leg holes, okay? So we chained up two, we turned. Okay, now I want you to watch this. Okay, I'm going to grab my yarn, go into that first stitch, grab my yarn. Now normally I'd yarn over and pull through, but I'm not going to. I have three stitches on, or three loops on there. That's okay. I'm going to yarn over, go into the next stitch, grab my yarn, pull up, yarn over, and go through. There should be five stitches. I'm going through all five stitches. So what I have done is I have decreased by one stitch because I only have one stitch here now. And I've gone through two. Okay, so now we're going to count. So this row, we're going to have 18. So this will be one. And now we're just doing normal half double crochets. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, Nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. Okay. 17. So here, the next two stitches are where we're going to decrease, okay? So we're at 17. So now we're going to go yarn over into the stitch, grab our yarn, yarn over into the next stitch, pull our yarn through, one, two, three, four, five loops, Yarn over, pull through all five, and there we have decreased on this end. Chain two, and we're going right into another decrease, okay? So, yarn over into the stitch, grab your yarn, yarn over into the next stitch, grab your yarn, Yarn over, go through all five loops. You have decreased for that first row. So that was one. And this row is going to have 16. So two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. Fifteen, and then we stop at 15 because the next two stitches we're going to decrease, okay? So 15, yarn over into the stitch, pull our yarn through, yarn over into that next stitch, pull the yarn through, five stitches or five loops, one, two, three, four, five loops, yarn over, pull through all five. We have decreased again. That was our 16 row. Okay, chain up two, turn your work. Now, we're right into another decrease, okay? So, that was our 16 row, this is our 14 row. So, 
yarn over into the stitch, pull your yarn through, three stitches, yarn over into the stitch, pull your yarn through, five loops, one, two, three, four, five, go through all five loops. So that counts as stitch one, then half double crochets across, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, Thirteen. Okay, we're at thirteen. So that means these next two stitches are a decrease. So thirteen. Yarn over into the stitch. Grab your yarn. Pull through. Yarn over into the next stitch. Grab your yarn. Pull through. Now we're going to go through all five stitches and that is our decrease. They have fourteen stitches. Now we're going, this is our 12 row. We're going down to 10, okay? So, yarn over into the stitch, grab your yarn, yarn over, go into the next stitch, grab your yarn, pull through all five stitches. I did it a little quicker that time because uh, we can, you've got the hang of this. So, two, three, four, five, oops, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Okay, so our last two stitches are a decrease. So this is go through, go through, and that makes 12. Chain up two, one, two, turning around our work. This is our final decrease row, and see what's happened here? See how we've got, that's our back that we did, and now we have it tapering for our front legs. Okay, so in, in, pull through, decrease. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and then this is our last decrease in the stitch, pull through, yarn over in the next stitch, pull through, yarn over, pull through all five loops. Now we're jumping right into the neck. So we're going over to the back. This is our chain two. We are going to go into our chain two. Okay, we're going into, we're connecting them now. Come on, come on, don't be a stinker. Okay, and we are slip stitching. Okay, we're chaining up two, one, two. Now we're having the right side facing us, okay? But we're gonna make this a long loop. We're gonna go back to that spot where we had pulled the yarn through but not pulled it tight tight. We're going back there. Okay, so we're gonna pull that out of there. Pull up our loop and we're gonna slip stitch that into the side we just made, right? And this is why we left a bit of a tail we're going to slip stitch that into here, okay? So we're just going to slip stitch it. 
Then we are pulling our tail through our loop and this time make it tight. Okay? And there you go. That's one of our little leg holes. Okay? Then I'm going to just tuck that right in there and get it out of our way. So now I'm going back to where we had our loop and our working yarn. And we are going to go around. We're going to go around. We're going to have 30 stitches because we've decreased to 10 and we've got 20 around the back. We're going to go 30 stitches. We're going to go three rows high and we're going to alternate chain and stitch for the join at the end. And then we're going to meet back here. So go ahead and get busy. Okay, so I'm at the end of my last wrap around. So we did three rows of half double crochets around 30 stitches, right? So here we go. We're at the end. I'm going into my chain two slip stitching. I'm going to leave a long loop, take my yarn, snip my yarn. I want a bit of a tail because I'm going to have to weave it in and make a knot. Okay, so you have made the base of the dog sweater. Now I'm just going to tell you now, which you know, you might want to know <laughs> or not, whatever the case may be, that, whoops, that this base you can use for any, um, any applique you want to add. Today we're doing the Pokemon app applique, but if you want to do hearts or stars or flowers or whatever, this is the base. Do any color you want. Make it like this. This is the basic extra small um, coat part. Okay, so now this is where Jada in Stitches... Um, tutorial comes in and I will put a link of it below. I don't do things exactly the way she does, but I uh, I do what I do. Now, we have to start off in black and black is hard to see on camera so I'm very sorry, but so I cross my yarn over in the front. I take the yarn and I pull it through and that's how I get my slip stitch. If you have a different way, that's fine. Do it your way. Okay, we are going to chain 10, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Okay, so I've got a chain of 10. Now, I might not have enough black for this. I don't have to get up with the big old bowl. Okay, we are doing half double crochets. So, you know what, we're going to go 11. I mean, she goes 10, I'm going to go 11 because I like to have a chain 2 for my half double crochets. So, not the first, not the second. We're going into the third chain from the hook. We are doing yarn over. We're doing half double crochets and we just did a whole schwack of them. So, we want 9. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and 9. Now whenever I'm doing the final, I kind of wrap my tail around so that it gets caught in the stitches, okay? So we've got nine. We are gonna snip our yarn and pull it tight. Pull it, pull it through the loop and then pull it tight, okay? So we've got a set of nine half double crochets. Okay. Now, we are going to take our red. It doesn't matter if you take the red or the white, whichever, pick one. We are going to our chain two, okay? Um, in her video, she does a chain one. I do a chain two. I like chain two for half double crochets. So, and I don't do anything the right way, so I do it my way. 
but I just wanted to make sure that she gets credit for this because I did not come up. So I pull my yarn through and then I'm going to chain one just to establish it, okay? Now we're going to count our stitches. We want to go into the fifth stitch. So one, two, three, four, five is right here. We are going to do a treble crochet, okay? So you wrap around your needle twice. You go into that stitch, you grab your yarn, pull through. We're going to go through two stitches. We're going to go through or two loops. We're going to go through two more loops and then two loops, okay? See? So, go around your crochet hook twice. Into that same stitch, we're going to put nine of these treble crochets into this stitch. Oh, my yarn separated. Okay, so that's two. Okay, and go again. Yarn over twice in the same stitch. Grab your yarn through, yarn over, go through two loops. Yarn over, go through two loops. Yarn over, go through two loops. So we've got three. We want nine, okay? Yarn over twice. Go in, through two, through two, through two. Yarn over twice, go in, through two, through two, through two. So we've got one, two, three, four, five. Yarn over twice, go through two, through two, through two. Yarn over twice, go through two, through two, through two. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We need to do two more and it looks like it's getting pretty full, but that's okay. Yarn over twice, go in the same stitch, through two, through two, through two. Yarn over twice, same stitch, go through two, through two, through two. So we should have nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Now, we are going to go to the very last stitch there and we are going to do a slip stitch and then we are going to snip our yarn, pull our tail through our loop and pull it tight. So look at what we got so far. Isn't that cool? Okay, now we're going to the other side. We need our white or red, whichever one you did not start with, okay? We're going to go to the very end, um, but you want the right side facing you, okay? We're going to pull up a stitch and we're going to chain just to anchor it, okay? Then we're going to find where the middle is right down from where we put the red, okay? So I'm thinking we're going to go right about there, okay? So yarn over twice, find your spot, pull through, yarn over, go through two, through two, through two. And we're going to do the exact same thing. We're doing this nine times into that exact same stop, spot. Okay, through two, through two, yarn over, go in the same spot, and we're going to go through two, through two, through two. Yarn over, same spot, through two, through two, through two, for nine of these. Yarn over twice, in the same spot, through two, through two, through two. Yarn over twice, same spot, through two, through two, through two. Yarn over twice, same spot, through two, through two, through two. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I need two more. Through two, through two, through two, yarn over twice. In the same spot, grab your yarn, pull through, go through two, through two, through two. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. We're going to that end. 
we're gonna find the end we're gonna just do a slip stitch make a loop cut a tail tail goes through loop pull tight and look at that okay but we're not done we're not done don't get excited okay now we have to make our center okay so just a sec because I ran out of black I'm going to go find some more scrap black. okay I'm back so now we're doing the little center button so we're going to take our white we're going to um make chain two okay now I'm doing this differently than she does but that's okay everyone does things different okay so I'm gonna take my tail and I'm kind of wrapping it around my hook so that when I take this thread through okay then I'm gonna do a single crochet okay in there so that's one. I'm going to do six single crochets. Two, three, four, five, six. Okay, so I've got my six single crochets in there. Okay, then I'm going to slip stitch into that very first stitch okay but here's where we do it different okay so I'm gonna grab my black now and where I would have slip stitch using the white I'm gonna slip stitch using the black okay leave a bit of a tail okay oh darn it it can work smooth right okay so See, I got two loops. I'm taking the black and I'm pulling through. I'm tightening up that white. I'm chaining one, okay? So now I've just attached my black. Now, we're gonna do two single crochets, one, two, in every stitch around, one, two so that's four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve and then I'm going to slip stitch into that first stitch, pull a long loop, make a tail, cut my tail, and then I'm going to go and cut the tail from the white. Okay, now, you know how I said I cut my tail when I did that first? So now, see how there's a little hole? If I pull it tight, the hole's gone, or it's very small. And that's our button for our Pokeball. Okay, so now we gotta put this together. Okay, so we have to go to my go bag. I have a go bag. I can put a link in the description. I have a knitting go bag. It has everything. So we are going to take the button. We'll start with the button first. We're going to simply tie those two white tails together. Okay. We're going to tie those two white tails together and we're going to snip them. That's all. I'm not weaving in ends on those. I hate weaving in ends. I'm just going to snip them. See how I snip them? Okay. There. That's done. The black, I am going to weave in. So I using my little tapestry needle and I'm gonna just quickly weave this one in. But you don't have to. I always uh, do back stitches too when I weave in mine. So I do a stitch, pull through, 
Okay. Then I go a little bit back and I go a little forward and then so I already stitched there but I go back anyway. Yeah. And that just you have to it's a real pain to take out if you need to take it out later, but it doesn't unravel either. So we're cutting that. Okay. I'm gonna leave this tail, which was fairly long, to the side for right now. Now I'm gonna tidy up my red. Okay, I'm gonna leave the longer tail because I'm gonna use that to weave it in. The smaller tail I'm going to simply weave into the red parts of the polka ball. Okay, so just like I said, you don't want to pull these stitches tight either because you don't want to distort your polka ball. Okay, so there we go. That's how we're looking so far. There's the back. Okay, now I have these two black tails. I'm going to leave one, I'm going to leave them. One I'm going to weave in. I'm going to weave in the shorter one. And I'm going to leave the other one to sew the applique on. So I'm picturing this in my head and you'll see what I mean afterwards. So the shorter one I'm weaving in. There we go. Okay. So then that one can get snipped. For the white, same thing. I'm leaving the longer tail so I can use it to sew on the applique. And the shorter tail I'm just weaving in. Okay. And I might not have enough, and if I don't have enough, then I'll just cut some off the um, ball. There we go, and there we go, okay, so those are woven in, okay, now I'm going to take my button, so that's how we're looking right now, cute little pokeball, I'm going to take my button, I'm going to place it on the center, and I'm going to do what's called a whip stitch, so... I'm just going to hold it on here because it's not a big thing, right? And then, sorry, it's a weird angle. So I'm going to pick up a little bit from the back and go through the front. Okay, and then just pick up a little from the back and go through the front. Pick up a little from the back and go through the front. And this is what... I know as whip stitch. Pick up a little bit from the back and go through the front. Okay, we don't want to catch our other stuff. And same thing. A little from the back, go through the front. You don't need tons of yarn. My tail could have been a bit bigger. So Take a bit from the back, go through the front. Take a bit from the back, and go through the front. And we do this all the way around. And I'm getting quite low on yarn. So, I guess in hindsight, you could have had more of a tail, but whatever. It is what it is. <laughs> okay, and then... To finish, I'm going to go in the back and I'm going to knot it at the back, okay? And I'm just, to knot it, I'm going to go through, pick up some black yarn, pull through it, and then go back through my loop, okay? See, and it's quite short. There we go. And then I'm going to just weave it in through the threads, 
using my back stitch. There we go. Okay. So, this is with the button. And crochet is, you know, you can manipulate it. So that's how I did it because um, I just did it a bit differently than she did on her video. There's nothing wrong with that. Now, this is where we get to play around, right? So we've got our dog sweater. Are we going to put it towards the bottom corner? Are we going to put it up in the middle? I'm thinking up in the middle. What do you think? Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Maybe m more towards the bottom. And I'm going to grab my go bag again. And I have some safety pins in here. Yeah, there they are. I love my go bag. <laughs> I just always have it around. Okay, so. So. This is where I just simply pin it on where I want it. So you, again, creative license, you know, put it where you want. I just basically don't want it to move while I'm sewing, so I put some pins in it. I use safety pins. There we go. So see, I've got it safety pinned on. So now, just like with the button, I'm going to take one of these tails. So I'm going to start with the white tail, huh, white tail. So, um, and I'm going to pick up a bit from the back and go through the front. Okay, a bit from the back, go through the front. And this is why it's important that it's pinned down because you see I'm kind of squishing my dog sweater. From the back, go through the front bit from the back, go through the front. I hope you can see this. I'm so sad that my tripod broke. Well, it didn't break. I just broke it, putting my camera in it. So you keep going around. I'm not going to be able to show you all of it, I don't think. So see, pull it through. bit from the back, pull it through, you can move your safety pin out of the way, bit from the back, pull it through, and I'm just picking up the, the very top um, of the yarn from the sweater so that I'm not accidentally sewing it together, you know what I mean? Okay, now this is, oh, I have a camera. This is the end. I'm going to put it through and I'm actually going to go, whoops, put it through and I'm actually going to go inside this sweater and make a knot. Okay. And just like I showed you before, I do a loop and I go back through my loop to make a knot. Okay. And then I'm just going to weave it in. And I weave it in towards the white of the polka ball so that if for some reason I accidentally go through the front that, uh, yeah, they won't see it. And then I'm going to just, there we go. Sorry, my tail was pretty small. I'm going to pull it back through the front. 
and see on the front it's sticking right there. I'm just going to very carefully, because you don't want to accidentally trim your Pokeball, I'm going to give it a trim and just push down the end. And there you go. There's the white part. So now I'm going to do the same with the black. So that way when you're sewing it on you're not having like stitches that show. Okay, so see here? I've got the black. Just pick a bit up from the back and go through the front. It's a bit from the back. Go through the front. You do that down the side. And then I'm going to go in to the back. I'm going to... There, this yarn is longer so you can see my my knot better. So I'm gonna go through stitch. Again, I'm staying on the black part. I'm gonna go through my loop. Oops. Whoops, whoops. Okay, go through the loop. I have enough I can do it front ways. Okay. I pull that tight and now because I have more thread I can go through, I can make two or three knots, right? Okay, pull it tight and then go through some stitches. Some stitches, I'm gonna put it through the front. I can go through it. I still have enough that I can go through some stitches on the front. And then I'm simply going to snip the yarn and push it flat. Okay. Now I've got my red. You don't need to be seeing my double chin. Oh my goodness. Okay, so now I've got my red, same thing. Taking a bit from the back, and going in the front. A bit from the back, going into the front. And we're gonna do this all the way around bit from the back and you want your bit from the back close to the stitches you don't want it way far away so that you have like long stitches throughout your pretty dog sweater that you just made you'll know what I mean when you a bit from the back and into the front okay and like I said, these, uh, ooh. oh, ooh. oh, well, <laughs> I'll show you what I did after. Okay, so a bit from the back into the front, a bit from the back, in through the front, a bit from the back, in through the front. And we were able to get all the way around. Good, good. Then we're going to go through the red to the back. Make our knots. Okay. And this is what I was laughing about. Accidentally caught a thread from the sweater. So you might want to hide your threads before. Um, of the sweater before. You, uh. I'm just going to give that a bit of a snip. There. We're all good again. Um, you might want to hide them before you do the applique. Ah, live and learn. I just get so excited to make a project. And I have to say, putting in threads is one of my least favorite things. But it has to be done, so... I'm going to do a second knot with the red because I have enough of a tail. It's always good to do multiple knots, but not because this is on a little puppy or kitty or 
whatever you want to have tons of knots I'm going through the front and I'm just gonna weave in some of the stitches in the front and then I'm gonna give it a snip and lay it down take off my safety pins <laughs> this ever look cute I have to thank Jada and Stitches. I'll uh, send a link or a picture. Now you can take, oh, sorry. <laughs> this is what it looks like. Isn't that the cutest thing? Isn't it cute? I love it. And I mean, it's handmade. It's not perfect, but it's pretty darn cool. I like it. Okay, so now we're going to hide our threads from our sweater. Turn it inside out and just hide your threads. And then you are done. Done, 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 like dinner. Er, er. So don't forget to hit the like and the subscribe. And like I said, I'm going to put a link for Jada and Stitches for her channel. She does do the Pokeball a bit different. She goes 10 stitches in the center. I did 9. I don't think it makes a huge difference. Hers might be just a bit fuller. She does her button a bit different. Again, I don't think that's a big deal. I've never followed a pattern or a recipe right, I don't think, in my life. So I always just kind of wing it. And again, you know, that may come from <laughs> learning to crochet from my grandmother, who was the same way. She just kind of, oh, well, look at it. If it doesn't look right, then fix it. <laughs> so that's what we do. So like, subscribe. I mean, you can sit here and watch me hide these threads. I'll record to the end of it. And then you can see the dogs that are absolutely perfect. And if there's any spots where you have your threads that you want to close up, this is the time to do it, like um, on my connecting row. The other thing you'll notice with my sweaters is I do do the connection not down the middle but on the side because... I don't know, for me, it always stands out when it's down the middle because that's where you expect it to be. But no one thinks to look for the connection on the side, right? And so it just looks, to me, seamless. And I love that part. But I'm picky and I overthink things. So <laughs> some people love that about me and some people hate that about me. But I have been thinking about this dog sweater for ages, and I have wanted to do it. So I am so glad I got it done. Um, I will put a link in the description to my Etsy store. If, uh, you know, if you just can't get it, that is not a problem. I make them and sell them. Or if you want... If you make it once and you're like me with some projects and you just never want to ever make something like this ever again because it was just the worst, <laughs> you know what I mean? Then you, and send one of your friends loves the sweater, then you can send a friend, you can share, you know, do whatever you have to do. Um, but I will put a link to my Etsy store and once I get this listed on Etsy, I can even put a link in the description for where you can buy the sweater if you so choose. Now, like I said, this is for an extra small dog. So like a, min, a small min pin, a Yorkie, um, uh, a Yorkie, a Chihuahua, that kind of thing. Oh, that's adorable. I love it. And there's our sweater. And see, they would wear it and their little feet would go out here. And oh, it's like a Pokeball. Isn't that cute? I love it. So thanks for watching. Hit that like, subscribe, hit the bell if you want to get notifications when I do other sweaters or videos. Because I don't just do sweaters. I also do cooking videos and, and uh, 
gaming videos and you name it. So I'm just all over the place. Have a great day. Thanks for watching.